When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab and thought, Surely this is the Lord's anointed. But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Saul was, you know, recognized significantly by his appearance. When Samuel was like, all right, surely this this guy, who's a lot physically like Saul, is going to be the next king, right? I mean, that's that's what we're looking for in a king. God's like, nope, nope. It's not just about the way he looks, or his strength, or any anything like that. I'm concerned with with his heart. Probably especially after the way Saul's heart was not inclined toward God. What's up, cool people? My name's Matt. Welcome back to our Bible study. Okay, so we're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 16 for right now. Um... Saul is currently king, but has fallen from God's favor because he disobeyed repeatedly. That's what it really comes down to. He's been kind of a kind of a brash king of sorts, not really thinking things through very well and being overly aggressive, all sorts of stuff that isn't the best. Um, and it, it, Israel is still having issues with the Philistines, um, that's pretty much a constant throughout 1 Samuel, but, um, we'll see what happens as we continue along here, so, here we go, 1 Samuel 16. Now the Lord said to Samuel, you have mourned long enough for Saul. I have rejected him as king of Israel. So fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse who lives there, for I have selected one of his sons to be my king. But Samuel asked, How can I do that? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. Take a heifer with you, the Lord replied, and say that you have come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you which of his sons to anoint for me. All right, so, um, <laughs> now, Samuel had initially mourned, I think, even just for the Israelites asking for a king, but, you know, God kind of reassured him, like, they're, they're rejecting me, it's not your problem, uh, just do what they want, find them a king, and that king was Saul. Um... But with Saul continually disobeying the Lord, um, and then, you know, God declaring that Saul, you know, isn't going to be king for real long, um, and that somebody else should be anointed king. Uh, Samuel kind of grieved for that as well, because he just, I don't know if it was out of pity for Saul, out of concern for Israel, I, I, we're not really told the reason why, but <laughs> at this point, God is like, alright Samuel, um, yes, it's a sad day, but there's work to do, we gotta find a new king, you <laughs> need to find the the one that I have chosen to be next so that you can anoint him. Um, but, you know, he can't just go around and be like, yeah, I'm here to anoint the new king because if Saul catches wind of it, he's not going to like that and could very well end up killing Samuel. Um... So it, it's they're they're going to disguise it a little bit as Samuel making uh, a sacrifice. So 
Then we get to verse 4. So Samuel did as the Lord instructed. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town came trembling to meet him. What's wrong, they asked. Do you come in peace? Yes, Samuel replied. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Purify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then Samuel performed the purification rite for Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice too. When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab and thought, Surely this is the Lord's anointed. But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. <laughs> and I'll be real, it seems especially fitting to me for God to say, Hey, don't be judging by appearance, alright? Because Saul was, you know, recognized significantly by his appearance. He was... He was tall. He was good looking. He seemed to be strong. And so, when Samuel was like, "All right, surely this this guy who's a lot physically like Saul is going to be the next king, right? I mean, that's that's what we're looking for in a king." God's like, "Nope, nope. It's not just about the way he looks." Or his strength, or any anything like that. I'm concerned with with his heart. Probably especially after the way Saul's heart was not inclined toward God. Um. So yeah, I guess Eliab is not the chosen one. Then we get to verse eight. Then Jesse told his son Abinadab to step forward and walk in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, This is not the one the Lord has chosen. Next Jesse summoned Shimea, but Samuel said, Neither is this one the Lord neither is this the one the Lord has chosen. In the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked, are, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse replied, but he's out in the fields watching the sheep and goats. Send for him at once, Samuel said. We will not sit down to eat until he arrives. So Jesse sent for him. He was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, This is the one. Anoint him. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. Then Samuel returned to Ramah. Okay, so... <laughs> basically, Samuel goes through all of Jesse's sons. It didn't state... I mean, it says the names of them. It doesn't state that they're going in order from oldest to youngest, it just says that, you know, they're... It's, it's all the other sons first, before David, because David was taking care of the sheep and the goats that the family owned. Um, but then, none of the older ones were chosen, so they send for David, he comes, and David is the one that gets anointed. Also, dark and handsome. Uh, as, as much as God was saying, you know, don't judge by outward appearance, that this is still the second king in a row that was apparently quite handsome. Uh, <laughs> but again, the, 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 the heart... It was what was more important to the Lord in this case. And we might not see that right away, but as we continue reading, there will be more and more evidence of that. Uh, footnote there. 
instead of Shimia, a Hebrew says Shema, which they say is just a variant spelling of it. Uh, it's, that's an especially understandable one, given ancient Hebrew and... If I remember right, the fact that it lacks vowels and some other things of that sort. Um, but same person. Uh, just a different way of spelling out or saying what could sort of be a same name. Um, think of it almost like how the name Sean can be spelled different ways. Uh the the most common ones I think are probably S H A U N S H A W N and then there's S E A N. But anyway, that's that that's pretty much what I think of when I see these kind of variant spellings mentioned in these footnotes. Anyway. All right, so David has been anointed king and the spirit has come upon him as of the anointing. And then we move along to verse 14 here. Now the spirit of the Lord had left Saul and the, and the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression and fear. Some of Saul's servants said to him, a tormenting spirit from God is troubling you. Let us find a good musician to play the harp whenever the tormenting spirit troubles you. He will play soothing music, and you will soon be well again. All right, Saul said. Find me someone who plays well and bring him here. So, <laughs> while the while the Lord's spirit filled David, it left Saul. So, uh, and it also says... Now it says the Lord sent a tormenting spirit. Now, uh, actually, let's read the footnote there before I try. Okay, it's or it could be read as an evil spirit. Uh, now, was this supposed to be a sign from the Lord to Saul that, you know, he should change his ways and seek God with his heart a bit more? Or at all, as the case might be, I, it's it's not really made clear. But for for the sake of what happens, you know, knowing that Saul is just continually fighting this, I, it says depression and fear. Um, it just all sort of mental troubles going on possibly stemming from him being told that he doesn't have God's favor anymore or other things like that I don't know there could be multiple reasons but his servants try and find a way to comfort him and they're going to they're going to see if having a musician in there to, uh, you know, soothe the savage beast, so to speak, will end up working. Um, so, we get to verse 18 then. One of the servants said to Saul, One of Jesse's sons from Bethlehem is a talented harp player. Not only that, he is a brave warrior, a man of war, and has good judgment. He is also a fine-looking young man, and the Lord is with him. So Saul sent messengers to Jesse to say, Send me your son David the shepherd. Jesse responded by sending David to Saul, along with a young goat, a donkey loaded with bread, and a wineskin full of wine. So David went to Saul and began serving him. Saul loved David very much, and David became his armor-bearer. Then Saul sent word to Jesse, asking, Please let David remain in my service, for I am very pleased with him. And whenever the tormenting spirit from God troubled Saul, David would play the harp. Then Saul would feel better, and the tormenting spirit would go away. Now, when it says that, you know, the servant told Saul 
that the Lord is with him, like, it makes me wonder if the servant knew about, you know, David being anointed. Maybe not. I don't know. But in any case, I kind of wonder, okay, how would he know that the Lord is with him? Like, where where is he getting this information from? I'm sure they have all kinds of, you know, information sources for all that kind of stuff. So, I, I just wonder... Because you would, you would think if a servant of Saul knew that David had been anointed the next king, that they would be less inclined <laughs> to, you know, try and have David help Saul out. But I don't know. I, I maybe, maybe they cared more about Saul feeling well than they did about whatever anointing happened with David. I don't know. We are not in their situation. We cannot know their motivations for sure, unless they end up being stated outright, which they're not in this case. But anyway, so it turns out not only is David a shepherd, who they say is also a brave warrior, has good judgment, and he's good with the harp. So like... D David's basically a renaissance man here. M man of uh, many talents, at the very least. But, um... So, David goes and... is then living there with Saul and his servants. And whenever Saul ends up feeling troubled, he plays the harp and helps Saul feel better. And that's, that's how they get introduced to each other. Now, I also wonder a little bit what David thought of this whole situation. He might have just seen it as, A, a way to serve. And I he could possibly also, B, have thought, hey, maybe this is... I mean, I've been anointed king, so maybe this is my in to the throne. Maybe it doesn't have to be a violent kind of thing. Maybe, uh, you know, I will get favor with Saul and he will be okay with me being the next king or something to that effect. We don't know exactly, but yeah, in any case, they've been introduced to each other and um, as much as it starts out looking pretty good, um, it's only going to get more complicated from here. But we'll have to see about that as we continue reading through 1 Samuel. That's all we've got for uh, chapter 16. All right, so uh, David has been anointed the next king of Israel. Saul is still sitting on the throne. He's still the active king, but David has been chosen by God as the next one. And we also then get a bit of interaction between David and Saul uh, with David essentially serving Saul as a musician playing the harp to help ease his mind whenever he has this troubling spirit take over him. But I, I guess we'll see more on that development in uh, other chapters as we keep going. But that's it for now. As always, like and share if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel and click the bell if you're on YouTube to get updates when I post new videos. If you're seeing this anywhere else, give me a follow or whatever you have to do for that platform. Look down in the description to get info on other social media pages and all that good stuff. And leave comments down below the video with any thoughts you have. Including, um, I, I, I tried to uh, get a little bit of background music for the Bible study stuff. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the balance of that. So, especially if you have thoughts on that, let me know down in the comments. But anyway... As always, I uh, hope you're all doing well. Hopefully, I'll see you soon for another video. Whatever the case is, till next time, stay cool, people.